Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory, the video series where we talk about probability distributions, statistics and related stuff. And in today's part 27, we will talk about the so-called k-sigma intervals. There, the most important one would be the three sigma interval, which is used in a lot of sciences where statistics is applied. However, here we will do it in a general setting, so for us it's an application of Chebyshev's inequality from the last video. And now before we start with the definitions, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And if you want to have additional material for this video, just click the link in the description. And with that I would say we can immediately start with the general assumption of this video. Namely, we have a given random variable x defined on a probability space. And for this random variable x, we want that the expectation and the variance are defined. Which means they are both given as finite real numbers. Hence, this is the only restriction we have for the random variable x here. And moreover, we can shorten the notation here, so let's use the letter mu for the expectation and the letter sigma for the square root of the variance. Indeed, we already know that this is called the standard deviation of the random variable x. In particular, you should know that these are common notations one has for the normal distribution. However, here our random variable x can have any distribution. So for example, in the continuous case, we could have any probability density function here for x. So maybe it's not so complicated, it might just look like this. And then depending how symmetric this function is, we would find the expectation here somewhere in the middle. Hence here we find the number mu. And now our k sigma interval would look what happens around this value mu. This means the unit here is given by sigma and we go k steps to the right and k steps to the left. Therefore we have mu plus k sigma here on the right and mu minus k sigma on the left. And then we can go with k through the natural numbers, so we have k is equal to 1, k is equal to 2 and so on. And in fact for reasons we will discuss soon, the most popular case is k is equal to 3. However, no matter which interval we choose here, the common question is always what is the probability to lie inside this interval. Hence, in the case of a probability density function, the question is what is the ratio of this area here to the whole area. And you might already see that we can estimate that in the general case by using Chebyshev's inequality. Therefore, the first thing we should do now is to recall this important inequality. The only assumption it needs is a real valued random variable where the expectation exists. And then we can estimate the probability that x minus the expectation is greater than a given epsilon. And indeed, we get an upper bound given by the variance of x. More concretely, it's the variance of x divided by epsilon squared. And obviously here epsilon should be given as k times sigma. Okay, with that I would say let's start talking about these k times sigma intervals. First let's write down the concrete definition for them. As stated before and as seen in the picture here, what we want is a probability. So we have p of x element in an interval. And we already know it should be the interval mu minus k sigma to mu plus k sigma. And please note, usually it's the closed interval. Okay, so here we can say we measure the probability of all the samples where the random variable has values in this interval. And therefore we can also easily reformulate the whole thing. Namely, we can write p of the absolute value x minus mu is less or equal than k times sigma. And there you should already see why Chebyshev's inequality might help us here. However, 
we see that Chebyshev asks about the probability to lie outside of the given interval. Therefore, we have to reformulate this probability such that we have the complement. So first, let's go to the open interval where we just have a strict inequality here. In other words, we have a smaller set here, so we know the probability cannot get larger. And then in the next step, we can go to the complement of this event. So we have 1 minus the probability of the complement. Which means there we have our greater or equal sign. Which is exactly what we have in Chebyshev's inequality. Hence, we can finally use that one here. And please note, since we have a minus sign in front of the probability, the inequality here is also flipped. So we get 1 minus the variance of x divided by epsilon squared. And obviously our epsilon here is k sigma. So we have sigma squared in the denominator, so the variance of x cancels here. And what remains is simply 1 minus 1 over k squared. So sadly, this estimate does not help for the case k is equal to 1. However, for all other cases, we get a positive number here on the right hand side, so it tells us something for this probability. For example, for k is equal to 2, we have that 1 over k squared is 1 quarter. Hence, the probability of our 2 sigma interval here is greater or equal than 75%. And again, please note, this is a general result. It holds no matter which distribution we have for the random variable x. And for this reason, we should also look at the important 3 sigma interval. Obviously, there we get an even higher probability. It's a simple calculation. We simply have 8 over 9. And this means that more than 88% of the samples lie in the 3 sigma interval. And this is measured with respect to our general probability measure p here. So the point here is that the 3 sigma interval already covers a lot. However, please don't forget, here the point is that this is a general estimate, because for some particular distributions, the actual probability here could be much higher. Especially the normal distribution already shows much better numbers here. Indeed, calculating the k-sigma intervals for the normal distribution is something one can do by considering the corresponding integrals. However, we can also find an estimate by simulating the normal distribution in R. For this, let's fix the standard one where mu is equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1. And then let's open our R studio as we know it. Okay, there we can immediately go to the documentation where we see that R norm is exactly the command we need here. Because there we get n samples with respect to our standard normal distribution. So maybe let's say that 1000 samples is enough for our estimate here. So this means now we can define a vector x that gets us R norm with n and also 0 and 1. And there we can check if we run the script, then we get exactly our vector x here, and this one looks like a lot of samples. But now you know, we want to check how many of these samples lie in our k sigma interval. And for this, we can simply take a selection from this sample vector. So we simply write x, where x has to be greater or equal than minus 1, and it has to be less or equal than plus 1. And there you see, this is exactly our 1 sigma interval. And then I would say, let's see what comes out here. We have the new vector a, and we immediately see we have less samples in it. Indeed, since n is 1000, we immediately see we have 68.5% of samples in A. So we can say this is our estimate for the 1 sigma interval. Hence, in order to calculate it here in R, we just have to divide the length of our vector A 
by the length of the vector x. And maybe let's call this result sigma1. Okay, and now we can just print it to get a rough estimate each time we run the script. Indeed, we see there is a little bit of fluctuation going on, so maybe let's increase our n here. And then if we run it again, we see we don't change so much. We definitely have 6, 8. Indeed, if we are really into it, we could increase n even more. And with that result, you might believe me that the first three digits here are safe. Hence, the first, the one sigma interval here is already at 68%. And now in the same way, we could simulate the two sigma interval here. We don't have to change much. Instead of a one, we have a two here. And then let's run the script to see what we get here. Maybe let's run it more times, but we definitely see we are at 95%. So you see, our probability here is much higher than our estimate from the Chebyshev's inequality. In fact, the three sigma interval for the normal distribution is already really high. Again, in order to calculate it here in R, we don't have to change much. Here we have a minus three and there a plus three. And then as before, let's simply run it again and again. And then we see we are at 99%. Indeed, it's even better because 99.7% are covered here. And there I can already tell you, you should definitely remember these three numbers here for the first k sigma intervals of the normal distribution. Especially in statistics, these numbers come in again and again. However, before we can start with statistics, we first have to cover some more general theorems of probability theory. And this is definitely something we will do in the next videos. So I hope I meet you there again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.